Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Giant Mess. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about uh, one of the best weekends of 2023 and probably one of the best weekends I've, I've had in a good three, four years that didn't involve my daughter. So um, let's get right to it. I uh, Last episode, I teased that I would be going to the This Is Important live recording at uh, the Excite Center at Parks Casino. In Ben Salem, Pennsylvania, Ben Salem, Pennsylvania, where I had my senior prom, where before we went in and entered the building, my date was smoking a cig and they said, Hey, I think we're going in now. She flicked the cig on the ground and they said, Whoa, check that. We're not going in right now. She then went on, went and picked up the cigarette off the ground and continued smoking it. <laughs> Ooh, so that's my experience with Ben Salem, Pennsylvania. I think I might have dated a girl from that area in college when I was working at Sesame Place. Throwing a lot at you right out the gate, but this is important for anyone who doesn't know. It's the workaholics guys. The guy, uh, Adam Devine, Honors Home, Blake Anderson, Cal Newcheck, uh, they had a show. Workaholics on Comedy Central from 2011 to 2017. Really bummed that it ended the way it did. Um, and there was supposed to be a, a movie in the works, and Paramount Plus canceled it, saying that uh, I guess Workaholics and the Workaholics guys, that crew doesn't have like global appeal or some shit. I don't know. So I uh, have been listening to them since day one. This podcast of theirs, This Is Important, has been around for two or three years now. I want to say they launched in 2020 or 2021, probably 2020. And um, it's just like, you, you. I just want them to keep working exclusively with each other for the rest of their lives. <laughs> I know they probably don't want that. And they're probably getting sick of each other on this tour, but um, the tour started in, I want to say September. It's now December. So it's been going on for four months. I can only imagine. That's a long ass tour. And I think they're finally coming to an end now. So uh, I, I'm, I mean, as soon as they announced the tour and the tickets went on sale, I, I looked to see if they were coming to the East coast, they didn't have the East coast dates up yet. But as soon as they did put the East coast dates up and made that announcement, I got on there and bought two tickets. Who was I going to bring <clears throat> at the time? I didn't know. I was talking to a few different people by a few. I mean, two, 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 seriously, a third, <clears throat> you know, was kind of in the mix, but not really. Humble brag. And so uh, I uh, eventually, <clears throat> uh, three became two became one. And so uh, I took uh, my girlfriend. <laughs> yes, major drop, major bomb drop, major alert, breaking news, stop the presses. I have a girlfriend. And it uh, feels good, not going to lie. Um, I'm, I'm happy, you know, it's, uh, if anyone's followed this podcast and followed my journey, yikes, hate using that word, uh, my stories, you know, uh, how do I, you don't want to go too far back, but it's, it's been, it's been an interesting couple, five years, four years, three years, um, where, you know, that first, uh, when I first found out my first, my ex-wife first told me she wanted a divorce to trying to save the marriage to the separation process having to live together and still being and being separated and going through all the negotiations of the the agreement uh really killed me inside you know and it, it was just it was just awful i mean it was just like i hope no one ever has to go through that because it it it, it like took a chunk out of me big time <clears throat> so uh, to go from, all right, now I have to live on my own. You know, I have my daughter half the time, which sucks. 
And um, in this uh, quote unquote luxury apartment, which is not luxury at all, you know, that was a, that was a, that was a low moment. <clears throat> I was very low in September, October, 2021, when it was like, all right, this is really happening. I'm moving out and I'm not going to be able to see my daughter every day. And yeah, this is happening. Cool. And I was also, things were not great at work. <laughs> so I won't get into the details of all that. <clears throat> Just to say it was probably the lowest point in my life. And so to go from September, October, November, 2021 and being like, I just love is dead, you know? And I'm like, I, I, do, I have no interest in dating and uh, I just don't see, <clears throat> I don't see, I'm just like, I'm just going to take care of my daughter and that's that. Like, I just don't, there's no, I, it's not in me, within me to go out there and, and date. I don't even know how to do it. <laughs> I don't even want to do it. You know, dating sucks, but um, it was about a year, oh, less than a year, I guess, where, um, you know, I, I in September of 2022, I think I went on my first uh, post-divorce date, had a couple dates, and then, uh, you know, got laid off again <laughs> from work. So that, like, that... I probably overreacted a little bit and I was like, well, I got to tighten the belt. I, there, I, I can't be dating and taking the, uh, you out to dinner for $200 a pop. You know, it's just not in the cards, you know, especially if, with the daughter in the mix. Like I really got a pinch and pennies. So, uh, I kind of went into hiding for a little bit, um, got a job. And so reached back out, <laughs> and went on one more date. And that was the date where I was a, a bag person. I looked like a bad person. So not, not a great showing, but you know, I think things turned around, you know, there was plenty of uh, times where it's like the delete the apps, the dating apps, go back on the dating apps, delete the dating apps, go back on the dating apps, talking and talking, talking, and just trying to get some kind of connection going until finally uh, over the summer, you know, connecting with a person that um, just stuck out to me just seem to stick out amongst the clutter and amongst the noise. And uh, you just get that good old fashioned feeling down in the old gut saying that I think there's something here, but you know, having been through what I have been through, there's just a lot of doubt. Right. And the, the way that that relationship deteriorated and it ultimately ended <clears throat> or changed forever was the withholding of information it was like the lack of honesty. And so when you have the lack of honesty and you, you're not forthright and you're not telling the, your partner everything, um, then you start to become suspicious. There's doubt, there's insecurity, blah, blah, blah. So it's, it snowballs for sure. So <clears throat> to find a person who it's, we talked about core values, but this person, their core, one of their core values, probably the top core value is honesty. And so that's just refreshing. It's rewarding. To know that, uh, sure, you don't want to dump out all your skeletons from the closet on date one, but it would be nice to get to, you know, slowly but surely, you let that person into your life and share your life with them. And, and that's what it's all about. You know, you have your, you have your, your partner, you have your partner in crime, your ride or die or whatever. Um, you know, ride or die is a little, is a bit dramatic, you know, and partner in crime is a bit traumatic dramatic but <clears throat> you get what i'm saying you find your you find a person who uh you connect with on a deeper level i guess that's what i'm trying to say so and that's what's happened and it couldn't be happier so uh the mood is like ever since uh it became official i think yesterday monday has it only been 48 hours not even oh my god it's not even 24 hours <laughs> But just knowing that that person is in, you know, committed and wants to put a label on it is uh, is a huge relief and a weight off my shoulders because it was, like I said, it was, it went from, oh, we're joking around, we're flirting, we're, we're, we're texting, we're FaceTiming, you know, we're wondering if we're ever going to meet in person. We do finally meet in person two months after we started talking after we tried to get something going in September and, and then October comes around and uh, we're able to meet and it was just like, you know, 
when you're able to hang with that person on your first date for eight plus hours, there's something there. Call me crazy. So, uh, you know, I, I think I was maybe pushing a little too hard for, uh, you know, that. And I, and, and I would say it was probably end of October when, uh, after our third date into our fourth date, like right in that time period, that week where I was just like, there, there's, I don't want to be with anyone else. <laughs> and so let's go for it. Um, this is, I'm now, I'm now mentally internally committing to this person. Um, and now I, I need to let them know that I would like, I would like that very much if, it, if, you know, our time is spent together and not with anyone else. Greedy, greedy old Neil reared its ugly head, but yeah. So, uh, my girlfriend, uh, I said last pod, I don't think girlfriend is a great term, you know, she ain't a girl. She's a full blown woman and I'm a man, not a boy. The way I act like it almost all the time exclusively. So wish there were better terms for it. <clears throat> there aren't. My buddy texted me and said, hey, special lady friend. And I said, well, my now girlfriend thinks that lady friend makes it sound like she's a side chick. And then I'm having an affair. <laughs> so it's like, I don't think lady friend's going to work. I think woman friend just is a mouthful. <clears throat> you know, I uh, was throwing the term enamorada out there because I've never heard of it before. But apparently, I don't know if it's Italian or Spanish, but it just like, it's just kind of, it sounds cool. Like this is my enamorada and people would be like, I'm sorry, what? And then you get to go, yeah, it's my girlfriend. <laughs> so I guess, yeah. <clears throat> enamorada, probably not the way to go. So yeah, my girlfriend, the one with my girlfriend, my GF, she came over uh, Friday we had dinner reservations at the Liberty Bell Gastro Pub, Liberty Bell Gastro Pub at like six fifteen. The show is going to start at eight, so uh, or the, the doors open at seven, but it starts at eight, quote unquote. You know it's going to start, you know, fifteen minutes after that. So we have plenty of time to to get dinner. She came over. We had uh, <clears throat> it was touch and go because the the day before she texted me and said, uh, "I don't have a fever, but I have chills." And I'm going to bed and it's eight o'clock. So I do with that what you may, but I'm, I'm exhausted and tired and I have chills next day fever. It was 99.5. Then it was a hundred. And she, and I was like, listen, like I, I, I don't have to go. <laughs> we don't want it to go. You don't have to go. Don't feel pressured to go. We do not have to go. If you are this sick and you're not feeling well and you're just going to feel awful the whole time. No. We're not going to go. We'll just, uh, I get to throw on the old Nurse Ratchet Uni costume, bring over the bedpan and sponge you up a little bit. So uh, she was like, nope, we're going, we're going. I was like, all right. And sure enough, she she powered through it. Or as she likes to say, she pushed it down and powered through. So she was on all kinds of meds, <laughs> fair flu, fevers, chills, cough. So uh, she's a goddamn warrior for uh, not only going through with this and having to travel and go to a place and sit for dinner and, and then a show and then drinks after it's like, it's huge, you know, cause I know she probably didn't feel like doing that, but she'd also, you know, when we're at the level that we're at in our current situation, we're itching and scratching to get out there and do adult things. <laughs> you know, when you have your, your child and then you don't, it's like, all right, it's go time. Let's go. And when you have that opportunity, you don't want to miss it or waste it. So she was all in, which was great. Uh, you had a quick beer here. The, the Christmas beers are in full fledged force, full force, five box, five force. Uh, I went with a uh, three, six packs, each, uh, a holiday Christmas, uh, brew, the one, I think the consensus favorite in the clubhouse is the Harpoon Winter Warmer Holiday Ale with cinnamon and nutmeg. Hell yeah. It's her favorite uh, holiday Christmas beer. And I ended up getting a Southern Tier 2 Xmas, which is like 8.5 something percent. That'll do you right. 
And then uh, the the third one was a Great Lakes Christmas Ale, I believe is the third one. So all three of them are good, but I do think the Harpoon Winter Warmer probably uh, wins the gold. So we did have a beer here, uh, ordered the Uber, and the Uber came. We got in, closed the door, and he, 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 the destination pops up, and he's like, nope, sorry, not happening. Uh, can't take you, which has never happened to me before. So uh, I've now been with Uber for nine years, eight or nine years, never happened. So it's a first. And uh, I, I, you know, I'm running through my head like, wait, is this illegal? I'm pretty sure they can't do this. Like I, I thought the whole thing about Uber is they don't show the driver the destination until you get in the car and verify with your pin, and then that's that, and you go. And this guy was just straight up like, nope, I can't take you. If it were morning or afternoon, I could take you. It's night, I can't take you. I'm like, okay. Sounds like there's uh, probably a judicial edict or order in effect that's active right now, restraining. Uh, I don't know. So uh, I had to exit the vehicle and he's like, I'm going to transfer you to another driver and you're all set. And I was like, okay. And then uh, we had to wait another 10, 15 minutes. So at this point it's like a uh, reservation in jeopardy. Next driver comes, we get in, close the door and he's, he's good to go. So it's about a 35 minute, 40 minute drive to parks casino where the, the show's happening in Ben Salem, Pennsylvania. And we got there probably like right on time. So the the Liberty Bell Gastro Pub is at the back of the casino, um, kind of like two doors down or, you know, a hop, skip, and a jump from the venue, the Excite Center. Both of them are in the casino. And then the beer garden is in the back of the Gastro Pub, and that's for the after party. So we uh, rolled to dinner. We got a corner booth, which was pretty sick, kind of more private. You know, get to have, uh, get to talk uh, at a reasonable volume and not have to worry about anyone judging. <laughs> I uh, I went with the espresso martini to kick things off because it is the end of the week. And even though I think in my 20s, I would be, I wouldn't need any kind of upper to get excited and to last the night. <laughs> I think the espresso martini did me right. And um, I believe she went with uh, Jameson and Ginger. She didn't go with Jameson Jenner the whole night, but that is her go-to drink. <clears throat> so espresso martini led off with that, and I think I, I transitioned um, to uh, they, them, she, sh she, her, the Jim Beam Honey Lemonade or something like that. So that one was actually really refreshing. I remember <laughs> I definitely got a look because it is Jim Beam, and I'm not really a big Jim Beam guy. I haven't been for 20-plus years. But I did get a look from the GF on that. Uh, like, ooh. And, you know, she's a bit, you know, she's self-admittedly self-proclaimed bougie and a bit of a, a snob when it comes to whiskey. And this place had a, a whole whiskey menu, something like 40, 30, 20 to 40 whiskeys available. So I eventually, you know, deferred to her and I said, okay, after this Jim Beam, what are you, the cocktail? I'm, I think we're just going to go straight whiskey. You know, what are your thoughts? And so she pointed out Elijah Craig, which I have had before. And so I had that. Uh, was it neat? I think it might have been neat. Oh boy. Very good though. Very delicious. And uh, really put me just at the right spot, <laughs> you know, where it's like, I don't need to get up in the middle of the show and get another drink. You know, we got drinks to go. I got the Nishamani Mexican lager, which I didn't, it's crazy that a local be, local brewery makes a Mexican lager. I didn't really understand that. But again, I'm not well versed in beer brewing, but Nishamani Mexican lager, Mexican lager, kind of like, I guess, uh, in the same vein as Dos Equis, Dos Equis. And uh, for the meal, you know, we went with poutine to kick things off. She hadn't eaten anything all day which is uh, banana land. And so I know if I, I didn't eat anything all day, I would be tearing heads, ripping throats, cashing checks, like I breaking necks. I, I would not be able to compose myself. You know, my sister does these 24-hour uh, fasts, and I don't, I don't know, I don't know, with three kids. And I'm just like, I can't do that alone <laughs> in an in a, in a 
a full two bedroom apartment alone. I cannot do that. So, uh, you know, praise be, it was like a pretty impressive feat. So she, uh, she and I attacked this poutine. It was a short rib poutine. And, uh, we got us thinking, why aren't there more poutines in America at most restaurants? Like you just don't see it, um, as much as you would think, considering it's not like that crazy a meal, super popular in Canada. Not to say that if something's super popular somewhere else, it's going to be super popular in America, but is it because it was popular in Canada? We're like, we don't want that Canadian shit. America. It's like, I don't know. Broaden your horizons a little bit. Short root poutine hit the spot. And then I ordered a steak with fries, which I didn't even touch the fries because I got all kinds of poutine up in my, 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 my gullet, my belly. And uh, she went with the French dip sandwich. Comes with the horseradish and the au jus. And so I, I uh, demolished my steak pretty quickly. I think it was a 12-ounce strip steak, 14-ounce strip steak. Decent, you know. And uh, she eventually hit a wall um, and uh, offered up you know, a bite of her sandwich, which is was pretty much, I, I don't even think she ate half of it. And then I proceeded to make a goddamn of myself and inhale that motherfucker right in front of her <laughs> it was just like there was just no etiquette manners whatever it was just like slather horseradish dip eat slather dip eat slather dip eat um i must have looked like a great white shark coming out of the water there with the eyes rolling back in my head so i got the go-to drinks go to the go-to to go the to go go-to drinks and made it over to the uh, Excite Center, just a short walk away, right around that main bar area there, um, past the slots where you had, I don't know, why, why do old people love the slots? I don't get it. Truly, I don't get it. Uh, you might notice that the cough is gone, pretty much. Half an hour in, haven't coughed once. I think I've coughed once today as opposed to 1,000. So I uh, don't want to jinx anything. Knock on wood. But this thing, I think it kicked it. I think it kicked it. I think I, think I finally put it six feet under. This thing is finally terminated in finito, which is uh, so relieving. Um and of course, it's, it's you know, did I roll the dice by having my very sick girlfriend come over and be in close contact with her for 72 hours? Sure. But it was like, I, you know, I'm, I, I was like, bring it on, dude. My body has seen it all in the past. I mean, literally, I went to the urgent care before Halloween, the Thursday before Halloween, October 26th, October 27th, with a cough. I then had that cough. Pretty much up until, you know, I still have it kind of, but, uh, you know, that's fucking almost two months. It's six weeks pretty much. So I went to the urgent care again, the, uh, this past Thursday. So, um, and, uh, I was just like, you, you please do something <laughs> either take me out back and put me out of my misery or I, I don't know. I'm into voodoo, bring a shaman out. Let's get this done. Because uh, it's just, uh, it's driving me nuts. So this dude um, is a PA, physician's assistant. So I'm not like a doctor, but not really. I don't know. So I was like, oh, right off the bat, I'm like, oh, okay. Like, I'd really like to have a, a doctor, but I don't know. Maybe that's me being ignorant. So I guess a PA will do. And, you know, uh, my girlfriend said that the the PA is probably even better than a doctor because they are, they make more of an effort. I don't know. <laughs> this guy says that he was a former EN, uh, former ENT ears, nose, throat. And he's like, uh, he was like without a shadow of a doubt convinced that I had GERD and that the GERD or the LPR was causing, uh, tickles and irritations in my throat, which then was causing me to cough nonstop. Um, got tested yet again for COVID, RSV, and flu yet again, all neg, all negative on that front. 
And, um, but he prescribed me like, uh, prednisone, uh, amoxicillin and, <laughs> and, uh, what was it? Not Ozempic. Although I probably should take Ozempic. So fat. Uh, it begins with an O and it's basically like for, uh, prescription level heartburn. And I kept telling him like, listen, he's like, oh, you probably have like this burning in your esophagus, like down there. I was like, no, it's just irritated because I've been coughing my dick off for the past six weeks. So help a brother out. And so, uh, you know, I, I ended up picking up, uh, my daughter going over to Wegmans, to pick up my, my prescriptions. And I just went hog wild on like cough drops, cough medicine, like a, a, a throat spray. Like I was just like everything, um, that is in the cough section. I pretty much did a supermarket sweep into my cart and, uh, God damn it. It worked. <laughs> like I was like, this guy's so far off. There's no way this guy's right. But, uh, uh okay. So you're like, okay, Neil, you keep saying GERD. What the fuck does GERD mean? <clears throat> it is gastroesophageal reflux disease. It occurs when the stomach acid repeatedly flows back into the tube connecting your mouth and stomach. And then LPR is uh, laryngopharyngeal. So your laryn lary larynx kind of situation. Laryngopharyngeal reflux, LPR, occurs when a muscle at the end of the esophagus does not close properly. So... I've I've had some breathing problems and swallowing problems. <laughs> Two of them are basic bodily functions. <sighs> Can't even master that. So that combined with the, like what I guess is asthma, I don't know. You know, it's not looking great for your boy. So uh, I was like, "There's no fucking way this is reflux because I I haven't had heartburn. I don't have heartburn." But then he started getting into it. And he's like, "Well, you know, alcohol, caffeine, that'll do it." That'll irritate you. Do you go to bed? Do you lay down prior? You know, you're supposed to lay down not before three or four hours after your last meal. Are you laying down two hours after your last meal or an hour after your last meal? And I'm thinking, oh, shit. Yeah. You know, because when I do have my daughter, the way that this apartment's set up, I can't sit out in the living room, hang out and watch TV sitting down uprightish. You know, I, I like to recline. I usually come in here and just lay down. What's odd is like, normally you would think that would cause volcanic fury, but I've I've done taken some pretty good precautions and steps to to mitigate that. Um, but I guess not enough. So it's like not to mention pounding twenty four cans of uh, seltzer or club soda over a two or three day span. Maybe that's contributing a little bit. That's what I don't remember what episode it was, but me talking about carbonated beverages and how like they are, they can fuck you. You wouldn't think it, but I think when you exclusively are drinking carbonated beverages, it's like, eh, that might cause your stomach, your tum tum to get all, uh, uh, you know, like what happened in, in Willy Wonka, where it's just like you're just you're just you're starting to float, bro. So maybe keep burping come back down to earth and uh, let's figure this out. So laid off the caffeine, you know, I was drinking two 12 ounce cups of coffee, not dark roast. Cause that will, that will lead to criminal charges. So no dark roast, if anything, medium roast, usually light roast. So it was two, I was doing two cups of coffee and a lot of, uh, you know, club sodas, seltzers, cans, and not a lot of just regular water, I don't think. And so the caffeine combined with the White Claws, you know, I'm, I'm drinking White Claws tonight because it's like, a, you know, fuck it. <laughs> like, I, I think I deserve it, right? Get a little sweet treat every once in a while. So I laid off the White Claws. I laid off the caffeine and uh, really just drank uh, a ton of waters with turmeric and ginger. Like, I just literally took a teaspoon, tablespoon, dumped it in my water, mixed it up, got the emergency, dumped that in there. I have like uh, some kind of green thing. It's not green tea. It's just some kind of green uh, powder I can throw in there. And it's just like a fucking witch's brew. 
you know, over the cauldron, just mixing that up and taking that down. And, and I, I felt better, you know, just doing that. So that was, it was like, you know, just doing that pretty much all week. So yeah, the cough was, uh, the cough is gone. Hallelujah. So that was a long side story to get to this, the main event, the show. We stroll in, uh, we're in the back left, which now that come to think of it, I mean, I don't think there were a ton. There's three sections, right? There's the left section, middle section, right section. On the website, when I bought the tickets, you're looking at the uh, right section and it looks like it's an obstructed view. Like the only seats are obstructed view. It's like the walls jutting out and it's like, I'm going to look around a fucking wall to just see a, a live recording of a podcast. What are we doing? So wasn't going to go right. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot in the center. And if there was, it was like dead center where it's like, if you do got a whiz, then you're going to be the guy who's going to get up and you're going to be right in their line of view. And they're going to see you and they're going to call you out and they're going to roast you and you're going to get embarrassed and humiliated. It happens 100% of the time. So uh, I was like, yeah, I'm, uh, mm, I don't want to, I don't want to become a spectacle. It got to the point where I started planning it out. I was like, all right, we're not, so we're in the back left, right? It was like pretty much the only seats that were still available. This fucking show, they said it in the show. Um, this is the fastest uh, a venue is sold out on the tour, you know, and that and say what you will. But like that I felt, I felt like uh, it was a pretty proud achievement of mine that I was able to get on that before it got sold out. So way back left, I want to say two or three rows from the back. <laughs> and the, it's it's just like flat. It's not stadium seating, so it's not the back's not raised um, up. So basically, you know, I'm sitting there, and uh, there's a six foot eight dude. Had to be six eight, two rows ahead of me, and I couldn't see the stage, <laughs> like half the stage. It was, you know, on the right you had uh, Kyle and Adam, and then on the left you have Anders and Blake, and I could not see Blake or Anders. I had to kind of go around, and I have a big melon myself, so I can only imagine what. The, the person behind me, the people in the row behind me or the two rows behind me were thinking, because it's like, not only did you have me trying to get around, you know, moving my big fat head, you got another big fat head, two rows ahead of you. <laughs> so it's like, luckily they do have the two TVs, one on each side, which was helpful. Um, and uh, they did not disappoint. It was, it was such a great show. Um, I think they were probably a little apprehensive cause it's like, they, they don't, they have they're not from the East coast. They're not from the Eastern time zone. So like, they don't know about Ben Salem, Pennsylvania. So I think they might've come into it with really low expectations maybe. And, uh, having heard like they had just been in New York and I forget where in New York, but I think judging by the last episode that they put up, it was Long Island. And I listened to that, sh that, that episode today. And I was like, oof, it did not sound good. But then again, it's it's all about the sound engineer. Is he is he like making sure that he's getting mics in the right areas so that you can actually hear the reaction of the crowd? Cause that adds a lot to it. But I don't even think that was the case. Um, because it was just it just like you they just couldn't get into a groove until very late in the show. And uh yeah, but the, not like this show. This was uh from pretty much start to finish, uh, an awesome show. Um, they have, you know, the Kermit the Frog intro, uh, uh, which uh, Adam uh, Devine got the biggest ovation out of the four introductions. He also said that, like, it's funny, uh, over the course of the tour, you know, Blake the, started off doing a really great Kermit the Frog impression, and now he's just using his regular voice. <laughs> it's like, fuck it, you know, we're, we're, we're on the home stretch. We're almost done. Um, Ander said that Ben Salem sounds like a horny pilgrim and Blake said it sounds like a male witch, which I thought was funny. Uh, they said they, they threw out Geno's and Pat's cause it is, you know, fairly close to Philly and, uh, Geno's and Pat's both got booed, which I thought was, uh, interesting in it. I cannot remember the name of the cheesesteak place that we went to that was, is considered superior. I can't remember it. Hmm. 
it drives me nuts. It's either begins with a T, an A, or an S. <laughs> One of those three. Tony's, Anthony's, Sammy's. Hmm. But uh, I think I had it back in 2016, 2017, and it was a dynamite. Um, had it being casino, they uh, they broke it a little luck be a lady, um, which they, they broke that down for a little bit. Talked about loose slots, you know, because they're all about tight butthole, loose butthole. Talked about malls. There are no malls anymore. And when they, when Adam said that, we uh, there was had to be a half a dozen to a dozen people or more in the audience screaming out malls that they like. <laughs> like, Kega Prussia. Like, oh, okay. Malls are not dead. But he uh, he was talking about how, like, he hopes that when uh, our generation gets, you know, to retirement age, that we're, we're going to just convert malls we're going to reopen malls and all live in the malls, which I was like, that's not a bad idea. Um, there were some things that they did repeat. There was some new stuff. Uh, you know, they uh, talked about the rumor about Marilyn Manson that spread that what it, Marilyn Manson removed the rib so he could S his own D, you know, perform, perform self fellatio. And, uh, um, but the, I've, they've mentioned that in past episodes, I think. Um, and uh, the, I think they they spent some decent amount of time talking about the this uh, guy that they ran in, into in a bar after the New York show. Uh, this guy who had huge fake boobs, <laughs> and they were just they were like just trying to like talk through it. Like what what do you think he 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 probably just got the fake boobs and he was like no no I'm good I don't need anything else. And a lot of them are like yeah I, I guess if I. I'd probably do the same thing and just get some huge fake boobs. So uh, that was a good segment. Um, they brought up pegging at one point, and my my date, a girl, turned to me and said, "What is pegging?" And I was like, "I don't want to be the guy to explain this to you." And I, I feel like it's happening. <laughs> I didn't explain it to her that night. I did explain it to her two nights later after she pegged me, um, but. <laughs> See, it was, you know, I was just like, I don't want to be the guy to tell you all these dirty things because then I'm going to appear like I like I didn't come up with these terms. These terms existed. Someone else invented them. I heard about it because I'm a man and I hang out with other men. And this is what we talk about. Uh, they uh, if you follow the show, you know that Blake has a soundboard. And one of the one of the sound bites he plays is a little clip from. I think it's Ying Yang Twins called the Whisper Song, and it's it's literally it's like wait till you see my dick, wait till you see my dick, right? That's the lyric, and so I sang along because it's like I know that song and it was appropriate for what they were talking about. And Manny, uh, sorry, said her name. Beep. Mm, gotta take that out. So th my girl turns to me and goes, she gives me a face, and I'm like, that's what what that's the lyric and she's like oh i just thought you were being a perv and i was like well i mean i am being a perv pretty much exclusively 24 7 but that is the official lyric uh she's like i know this song and then i said the lyric and she was like gave me a look and i was like i don't think you really know the song talked about getting caught while watching porn which i think is like a bullet point that they bring up at every uh live show um you know i, I told her in the moment I was, you know, cause I don't want to hold anything back with this relationship. It's like, here it is. All the cards are on the table. Take it or leave it. Okay. Am I proud? Not necessarily, but the fact that I can say these things to you and you don't run away, that's probably a good sign. So, uh, you know, I told her like, you know, uh, the family computer, cause we're talking about the nineties, the nineties and the family computer and how we were so, so bold when we were younger that we we thought it was worth it to risk the biscuit and go on the family computer and look at nude pictures, pictures of nude women <laughs> in porn. And, you know, Adam told his story and I was like, it pretty much is the same as mine. As though, although Adam, like he was saying that his dad was like in the other room and he could see him from the other room. It's like, I don't, I can't do that. That is just ballsy as fuck. For me, it was like, I thought the parents were either out or so far away from me in the house. I make it sound like we're living at fucking Wayne Manor. Um, 
in the West Wing. I was in the study. So uh, I just figured she was so far away that I would never get caught. But man, she's sneaky and she's soft. Like in, she's quiet, like a ninja came up on me and uh, caught me on, I think it was like penthouse.com. <laughs> like, you know, you go with the brand names because those are all, all you know growing up is like, growing up, that's all you heard. Playboy penthouse, Playboy penthouse. So it's like, all right, we'll go to penthouse.com. And uh, I don't even think the picture had fully loaded yet, but it's like, you can tell from even the neck up. Yeah, that's porn. <laughs> it's not. Yeah, you're not looking at. Uh, you know, the same for social studies. So I said, oh, uh, I think in the moment I turned to her because she's like, what are you looking at? And, uh, you know, I nothing was out. Thank God. Like I was just looking. I was fully clothed looking. And so uh, she said, what are you looking at? That's disgusting. And I just said. Oh, you know what? I think it's a computer virus. I don't know what happened. I clicked on this thing that was for this thing and then this popped up and I'm trying to get rid of it. And she's like, well, close out of it right now. Get off the family computer. I was like, okay. So, um, yeah, that was, <laughs> that was the only time I got caught by mom, my mom. Hmm. I think the other time was in college by my sweet mate, not my roommate who just decided to barge in, walk in. The door's closed for a reason, Scott. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, they also talked about, like, uh, uh, options for what comes out of your wee-wee, you know? And Dura said you should get a tattoo that looks like the uh, the options at a at the, the soda machine you see at the movie theater where you get the press. I guess they have it at Wendy's now, too. But, like, you can press, like, okay. Uh, they give you, like, all these options. You press it, and that's what you get. And, like, you can get, you can get, Jizz, you can get blood, you can get urine, you can get. <laughs> so um, that was cool. The only part that I thought uh, sucked and that I, I really think they need to stop. And they've done this at other venues and it has, it has, they've been met with fucking crickets. And I don't know why they keep bringing it up. And I don't, and it's not even like, I don't think Blake and Kyle are into it. I think Adam tries to play along and make it funny. But Durs can, keeps bringing up school shootings, and it it just it was met with pretty much silence. And my girlfriend uh, is a graduate of uh, a school, a high school that had a shooting, a pretty well known shooting. Um, she graduated the year after it happened, or before it happened, excuse me. So she wasn't there, but she did lose a lot of uh, good friends, and so. Uh, so before that segment had happened, she had um, reached and kind of did the, you know, the arm entanglement type thing where she initiated the move. And I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> you know, I don't know that there's ever been a moment in my life where I, I mean, I, if there was a camera on me, dude, yikes, <laughs> I would have been giddy AF. It was uh, when she did that, I was like, oh, this is it's going to be a good night it's gonna be a good weekend it's gonna be a good month year uh millennia so she did that and so um we weren't holding hands but we had you know our arms kind of uh crisscrossed i guess applesauce and then durs brings up the school shooting shit and they talk about it for just too long and they bring up the they actually bring up the high school that she went to that had this uh this the shooting and you i could feel her tense up and, and gasp a little bit um, and I immediately, uh, grabbed her hand and squeezed it and held on to it for, for a long time. Um, you know, cause that's just, uh, I can't imagine, I can't imagine going through that experience, um, having been so closely tied to it and connected to it and then having, you know, um, you know, some guy who wasn't there is not connected to it in any way, uh, joking about it. Um, that was the only part that really brought the show down. And it's just like, just don't bring it up. There's so many other things you can talk about. So, um, but again, you know, when you bring up Marilyn Manson, it's tied to that shooting. So I get, I get it. You, you just kind of go in with what your mind goes to and that's what their mind went to, or at least theirs. But it's like, ugh. I honestly think something happened. Like 
if you follow the, the This Is Important podcast, he missed a show. I forget where. I don't know if it was San, it was not San Antonio. It was San Diego, I think. It was it's out west, I think. So he missed it and they said he had a family emergency. And then he comes back and the next show back, he's like super drunk and uh he's 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 going he's going hard in the paint for sure. And they 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 addressed it and mentioned it during the podcast. Like, uh, he's on one right now. So feels like the family emergency was pretty serious and that uh he's in a bad headspace. That's just speculation. You're not supposed to speculate. You're not supposed to talk about another man's job. But, and I'm not making excuses for him, but that's just the vibe I get. Something bad happened. Something serious happened. It shook him. And now he's in a, a no fucks given type mode. <laughs> but they did their, their Q and A's and their hot topics. The Q and A's, uh, None of them really stood out. I don't think they had to go around and sing the best, you know, one of the episodes of This Is Important, they sing the best part of waking up is folders in your cup. So like they go one for one that you have to judge like who's the best uh, at singing it. Kyle has a very underrated voice when he doesn't think about it. When he's put on the spot and he has to think about it, he's, he's a troche. But like when he doesn't, and he can just uh, he can just slip into it on his own without any provocation. Uh, he's, he's got a pretty good voice. And uh, they said that Blake sounded like he was taking a shit. Um, and he was like, yeah, you, you look at the best singers, the greatest singers, like Aaron Neville and all them. And they, they look like they're in pain, man. Um, <clears throat> and then the question that stuck out <clears throat> to me for the Q&A was the whose shit would you eat ranked in order? <clears throat> So, uh, the answers we got from that was just chef's kiss. You know, there's a lot of talk about nutrients. <laughs> there was a big argument about nutrients in, in waste, which was, uh, which was great. So hopefully, uh, hopefully I've not spoiled the entire episode for you. The hot topics that it were a bit lackluster, not as great as that one Q and a, they talked about scratch off tickets and expensive sandwich. So, um, I don't think, I don't remember any hot topics that stood out. So, uh, but definitely listen i don't think i really spoiled anything and i for sure won't spoil the ending even though i think it's already been spoiled if you've been to a live show you know what happens at the end but i don't want to give anything away all i'm going to say is a portal opens <laughs> and if you know that reference then i guess yeah i did spoil it for you apologies you know what? I'm going to spoil it. The wizards, they come out and they rap. You know, they, they talk about it in every uh, episode that they've uploaded. Um, you know, and usually it makes it into the Q&As. When are the wizards going to uh, make a comeback? When are the wizards going to perform? When are the wizards going to, you know, when's the portal going to open? And they keep playing, downplaying it. No, 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 no. And uh, yeah, they came out as the wizards, or sorry, the wizards came out and rapped and it was tight. You know, I feel like an idiot because to this day, I consider myself a pretty strong to quite strong Workaholics fan. I've never listened to the Wizards rap. I think I looked for it on Spotify and they said they're not on Spotify and I don't think they're on Amazon Music. So I just gave up, which is not, I mean, you know, that's not very fan like of me. It's not very hog cool. So uh, I need to get on iTunes, I guess, and, and, and and uh, get to it because it was it was pretty sick <laughs> it was pretty awesome um even my girlfriend was like oh they were really good uh so yeah the show came in it fell short it felt really short it felt like oh you know maybe they're just it's a friday night and maybe they're like you know it's been salem like what are we gonna do here let's just get out of here so I thought that that was what they were doing but no they i mean they pretty much did the same amount of time that they did for every other stop. You know, I think they came in at around a solid 90 minutes. They started at 8:15, and then I think they were done by like 9:45. So uh yeah, highly recommend. I think it's going to be one of the better episodes. I think the crowd was into it. We were nice and sauced. Um I I mean, I was laughing way too much. Way too much. And I turned to my girlfriend, I was like, "I I apologize. I'm laughing at everything." 
I am just so happy to be here and listen to these guys and watch these guys uh, do their thing live. Um, and uh, I warned her too, like going into it, I was like, I, I know I make some off color comments, some, I work in the blue, if you will. And I, I don't, I know you're not a huge fan of that stuff. Well, buckle up because it's, it's going to be 90 minutes of that. And she came out of it and was like, no, I, I liked it. It was cool. I, I think there was a segment on dad advice uh, when they were talking about how they raise their kids or how Adam should raise his kids because Adam's about to have a baby with his wife and the other guys all have kids. And so um, I think she really liked the, that segment, appreciated it. But you would think in her condition, she'd be like, let's, let's, I need to go home. We need to, I need to go to sleep. I'm sick as a dog. And so, nope, we went to the beer garden afterwards and we got a couple rounds of drinks. There was like a huge line. All the people from the show made this huge line heading to the bar that was completely unnecessary. <laughs> and I would have been one of those suckers that stood in that line politely um, as in like, a you know, whatever. And she's like looking, she's like, mm, there's just an open spot at the bar. I'm just going to walk up to the bar. And I'm like, oh, okay. So she walks up the bar, weighs me over, and I was like, oh, oh. You would think if you're in line, you see us do that, and we get served, you would be like, all right, time to peel off this formation and and veer left, and uh, let's get, get our drink on. But nope, people still stayed in that line, which was nuts. There was a guy, um, they had, you know, their staff was all dressed up, mostly ties, vests, whatever, guy in a suit tall gangly guy in a suit came around holding two bowls of what appeared to be meatballs in e in each hand and i was tempted if i, I mean I, you know i was full i was full like i guess if i hadn't had dinner i would be all over that shit but uh there weren't a lot of takers and i'll tell you why shit looked orange and i know we're in pennsylvania we're know we're in philly and, and i know uh, a lot of people uh, tend to be gung ho, right? They tend to be all for free food. We don't give a care, but it, it looked orange. <laughs> I was just like, "Ooh, those are radioactive, dude." <coughs> so, uh, yeah, that was a good time at the beer garden, and then we uh, headed home in the Uber. Got home, and we're still a little uh, fired up and amped up. You know, I I don't know how she said yes to this, but I was like, hey, Stavros Talkius has his new stand-up special on Netflix that came in on Tuesday called Fat Rascal, and I think we should give it a go. And so uh, she's like, well, what kind of comedian? Because she's not too well-versed in the stand-up comedy world. And so, uh, you know, I basically was like, well, he's like a short, fat guy with a mustache bald kind of looks like um if gallagher and weird al yankovic had a uh a child together and then uh neglected it <laughs> or something i don't know it, he's just a funny looking dude but he's proud of who he is he's proud of his body and it's and like in his materials a plus 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 like he can get gross and raunchy, but he can also um, he can also get very heady and intelligent. You know, he skewered tech culture. I talked about Elon, Elon Musk and how like about that Neuralink chip and how that can go sideways, which I that's gonna be a tough one. That's gonna be a tough one for me. The Neuralink. I don't think I could do that. And I know I think he went on Joe Rogan and said that it's gonna like because I, I listened to the interview. He said that like it could prevent or cure dementia or Alzheimer's or at least stave it off. So I was like, well, I guess if that's my only option, then yeah, I'll link me, baby. But, um, you know, it's a chip that's implanted in your brain. Mm, it gives you access to the internet or something like that's going to be the future. Um, <clears throat> so he had a couple of solid jokes about that. Um, but I think the technology that would have really done me in like the one technology from black mirror <clears throat> that was like, I want this, but at the same time, I don't want this. Like I really want this, but also I know it will be my demise. 
<clears throat> it will be my downfall. Like I, I will crumble if this is, because essentially I think it's a contact lens. You put it in and you can, you have, con, it's like voice controlled. And so you, it, it records, you basically record all your, you, it's like you've recorded everything because you're, they're contact lenses. So you never, you know, unless they're out of your eye, when they're in your eye, they're recording. And so this guy was just going back through his recordings and like reliving, you know, good moments in his life, bad moments in his life. And I was like, oh man, that'd be pretty sweet. And then I was thinking to myself, ah, I would, I would abuse that. That would get ugly quick. <laughs> I'm talking like long beard, long nails. Yeah. So probably not. Um, you know, obviously talks a lot about sex, uh, threesomes. He's uncircumcised. Uh, air travel, of course. He's a comedian that travels a lot. And uh, his delivery is just on point. Uh, he can do crowd work, no problem. Uh, he said he's going to, you know, on his podcast, he said a couple times now that he's going to take a break from stand up for a while. Because I guess he was supposed to go back on tour in February. And he's like, it's just, I just had my special take a little time for myself. So I hope he does because uh, I'd hate to see him burn out. You know, I get, I think some people, very few people are probably built for that where they can get done taping a special and then immediately get out there and start doing their new stuff. But he was like talking about some of these dates and towns that he had to go to. And he's like, do I really want to be, you know, in this place at new on New Year's Eve? No. And, uh, luckily he's got the kind of income now where he, it's not, he doesn't have to do it. It's like an option now. So Good for him because that that was a fucking awesome stand up special. I highly recommend it. Um, Fifteen thumbs up. So, and uh, I think you know, I don't think the girlfriend <laughs> appreciated a lot of it, but she hung through it and didn't ask to turn off. I was like, hey, before I put this on, uh, give it five minutes, five to ten minutes, and it, at the five or ten minute mark, if you want out. I am completely fine. We'll turn it off. And she said, she said she stuck with it. So, um, that has to say something, right? And then I, uh, proceeded to spill beer all over my leg. So it was like, yeah, you, you can't get through a, you can't get through a, a <clears throat> one date without fouling it up. So, um, you know, I think the rest of the weekend was, uh, was a blast. You know, she stayed over Friday. I stayed over at her place Saturday. Um, and, uh, we watched a ton of Netflix, which I, I love to give you those reviews right now, but, uh, we're probably going to get a bunch next week because I'm going to have some free time due to, uh, scheduling with the kiddo. You know, I'm going to have her for nine days for Christmas down in South Carolina. So I offered up a couple of days next week to compensate for, you know, she can be with her mother. So you probably get a, a few reviews then, but not tonight. No, I will give a little teaser. We watched Old Dads with Bill Burr, Bobby Cannavale, and Kate Anselton from The League. It's a comedy about three dudes who uh, started a kind of a nostalgia athletic wear company where it's like, you know, vintage retro jerseys, uniforms, and, and the like. And they get bought out by uh, some company that has like a guy that's like half their age, you know, trying to be Steve Jobs. And basically is a commentary on uh, the new wave of parents that I guess I'm kind of dealing with right now. I'm an old dad. You know, I had my daughter at 37, almost 38, which is a little bit on the older side. And a lot of the other, you know, parents that are, you know, in the same, have kids in the same grade as my daughter, you know, they're, you know, maximum, you know, 30, now they're probably maybe 37, 38. So feels a little weird being an older dad, but I'm not the oldest dad. I've seen older dads. So that's a little bit comforting. Um, but it is a, a lot of talk about like, you know, the new generation, uh, not just generation, the Z, Gen Z, Zoomers, Zoomers versus Boomers. So 
pretty funny. Uh, Bill Burr directed it, and uh, I'm not going to get too too deep into it because I think a full review might be worth it. Um, but after Old Dads, we watched The Killer on Netflix. Uh, that's with starring Michael Fassbender. It's directed by David Fincher. I'm a big David Fincher fan. I love Michael Fassbender. Should be a slam dunk, right? Stay tuned next week for the for the full review on that. Uh, you know, the fact that she was sick, I think that's why I got away with what I got away with <laughs> that Saturday, where we literally just were on the couch in the basement, you know, watching Netflix for legitimately from three to 11. I think we put in a solid eight hours of Netflix <laughs> that day, you know, because it was raining. It was raining pretty much the whole weekend, Saturday and Sunday. And on top of that, her being sick, not really feeling like doing much, even though she still finds it within her to work out every day while like burning up and coughing and hacking and shivering. And <laughs> it's like, I think you, your body's trying to tell you something. Maybe chillax. So we chillaxed. Um, so the killer, full review to come. I'm not going to do a full review on Matt Reif. She had wanted to watch Matt Reif. Um, I'm not too familiar with his work. Um, apparently, he's a very good looking dude. He's 28. And um, he's blown up over the past year-ish. And uh, I'm just trying to see here. Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a stud. He's a stud. And it's easy to see why he has such a huge following on social media 6.5 million followers on instagram facebook of course is being weird and twitter 316,000 following 316,000 followers so you know he had a new special on netflix called natural selection we we popped that on um i had only heard maybe i think i might have heard one interview with him at some point but I don't think I, I heard the full interview. I could have been wrong there. I might have started it and then stopped it. Anyway, uh, some funny parts, but not for me. It's just not my cup of tea. Uh, you know, I think his, I mean, you could hear almost everything he said got laughter from the crowd and the crowd was entirely women, all single, <laughs> all in their 20s, you know, all, uh, you know, just so enamored with him um lots of uh emphasis and you know uh accentuating and you know very uh kind of in the level of sebastian maniscalco but not as funny and um a lot of facial expressions which i think my girlfriend appreciated but uh it was like there's a lot of facial expressions and a lot of setup very long setups for very short punchlines that I don't think make the setup worth it, if that makes sense. So like, I've always been told, you know, go for a laugh per minute or better. And that's how you know you're, you're doing well. And it was a lot of like talking through a lot of stuff. I mean, there were certain things he said that just weren't jokes. It was just like, it, it sounded like the beginning of a joke. And it was just like, there's no real punchline to it. So, you know, he's super popular. I don't think, I don't see him becoming unpopular. Um, and uh, like I said, he had, he did have some, there was some good stuff there. It wasn't bad. Um, he talked about, you know, crystals, girls' obsessions with crystals. Um, and, uh, Would act effeminate a lot of the time. Effeminate, I, I I can act effeminate here and there, but it felt like he was acting effeminate a lot, and also using uh, what many would call to be like a black accent, <laughs> um, which you know is uh, I guess is problematic. You know, I mean, people sound certain ways, and if you if you imitate that sound, that, that all of a sudden that's now a certain thing taken a certain way but it was it was it was not like mixed in here and there it felt like it was pretty consistent so you know he talked about astrology you know how uh, a lot of women blame 
their behavior on a, a planet being in a certain position. <laughs> it's kind of wild. And uh, he said that he believes in ghosts and monsters. Ghosts and monsters are real. And they told a couple uh, of funny stories uh, there about uh, ghosts and monsters. I mean, the one punchline I could see coming from a mile away, but the crowd enjoyed it. Talked about his relationship with his stepdad and how he was introduced to porn. His The first time he saw porn was uh, his stepdad's stash collection up in the closet in a box, all the VHS cassette tapes, uh, which was uh, pretty good. And then he ended on a, a, a diatribe, a rant about social media trolls with a, a story about a flight he took. Um, so for anyone saying that uh, comedians joking about airline travel. I mean, like literally when I took my stand-up comedy class, like in 2012, 2013, they're like, here are the topics to avoid cats and dogs, air travel. They they give you like a hack list and air travel was always on it. And now I've I've watched two consecutive stand-up specials where they talk about air travel. It's how can they not though? Literally they're on the plane more than Anyone? I don't like anyone. You think about the number of dates that they do, the number of weekends they do in different cities or venues over the course of a year, you know, 52 weekends, uh, 100 plus flights. I mean, like, yeah, they're on a plane a fucking lot. So it's like, how can you not have material from a, a plane? So I don't, I don't blame them for that. And I don't think it's hack. It's just like, you know, you kind of heard it before. But his uh, his diatribe about social media trolls, I was just like, what is this? We know trolls are bad. Trolls are the worst. Um, so, you know, it was, uh, I mean, you know, it's got a 17% from the, uh, so 17% of audience members on Rotten Tomatoes gave it a favorable review. Uh, with an average rating of 1.5 out of 5. Now, is that review bombed? You know, everyone has their haters, right? And the more popular you get, typically, you know, I mean, there are people that hate Pat McAfee. It's like, what? why? <laughs> but if you become popular, you're going to have the people that love you. You're going to have the people that hate you but still consume your content because they want to hate on you for the content you put out there. Um, so, you know, I think he'll be all right. <laughs> it was just like, he's 28. You know, I mean, I was a goddamn savage at 28. Like, you know, I, uh, an affront in more ways than one, you know, the way that I behaved and thought and acted. So, and at that point we just had Facebook and I didn't even think we had Twitter yet. So, um, so, and I, I believe me, Facebook does a, a really good job bring up, trudging up some old memories and some old posts that I did. I was just like, oh my God. <sighs> so, yeah, I mean, my target demo, I guess, I, you don't need to watch it. <laughs> You're fine not watching it. You need to watch Stavros. Halkius, Fat Rascal. That is a must-watch requirement. Um, and uh, yeah, we had some drinks, which was nice. Start off with a coffee. I had got her this uh, Starbucks Christmas blend, which is a dark roast, a Sumatra bean roast blend, whatever. And uh, I got to try it for the first time, and it was so goddamn good. So I uh, that's, a, that's a recommend for me, dog. And then uh, she had an oatmeal stout beer which I haven't had an oatmeal stout in a long ass time. And that really hit the spot. Uh, A nut brown ale, which I didn't realize was a nut brown ale, which is, I guess it's the oatmeal stout is the nut brown ale. No, no, you idiot. But it was a nut brown ale. And the last time I had a nut brown ale was like freshman year in college. when I was hanging out with some football players and they, we were uh, housing nut brown ales, and I cannot remember. It's a, it's like the only nut brown ale that has like a name brand, and I cannot remember the name of it, and it might be discontinued. But I drank a bunch of that, and then went out, and they proceeded to get in a fight. And I was like, I don't know if I. This feels like we should not be getting in this fight. So I think I backed away from them and the nut brown ale after that. 
uh, just not not my style. And then uh, she made uh, some. She used to be a bartender, and so she made. She had like I want to say a dozen grapefruits, and she uh, was going to make. I got to look up what an actual Paloma is because I don't think this was technically a Paloma, but it was uh, Paloma adjacent. <sighs> tequila based cocktail. Okay. Mixing tequila, lime juice, and a grapefruit fruit flavored soda, such as fresca, fresca squirt, or yaritos. <laughs> Serve them rocks with the lime wedge. Okay. Yeah, that was, I mean, that was pretty much it. <laughs> Except instead of a grapefruit, flavored soda she had like a dozen grapefruit and she cut it up and juiced them into this big pitcher and so you have the the uh, tequila i forget the tequila that we we drank i think it was casamigos but don't quote me because i ain't said shit and so she fills up the uh, on the rocks tequila the grapefruit juice and then uh club soda so mm, yeah yeah it was basically a paloma and god damn are those good so goddamn good <laughs> refreshing crisp you know light but uh did did the job so i couldn't have appreciated that more um and uh we finished up the night by watching may december on netflix which is the uh boy it stars natalie portman and julianne moore <laughs> excuse and it's uh, about a story it's kind of, I guess it's meta, I guess you would say. Natalie Portman plays an actress who goes down to Savannah, Georgia to do research on a character she's playing. The character she's playing is a woman in who is 36, a teacher. I believe it was a teacher. Mm, no, not a teacher. Sorry. Not a teacher? I don't think she's a teacher. 36-year-old woman who has an affair, illicit affair, with a 12-year-old boy. And the the twist on that this is a, I think this is a real story, a true story. I need to look it up again, but um, they, what's interesting about it is like she went to jail, but she had his baby in jail and then they got married and had more kids. They had three kids, two girls and a boy. So I think this takes place, I don't think it takes place in 2023, the movie. I think it's set in like 2015. I could be wrong about that. But so Natalie Portman plays the actress who's going to play that woman, that character. So she goes down to Savannah, Georgia to do research. And so she meets, actually gets to meet the woman who's played by Julianne Moore <laughs> and basically is her shadow, wants to see how she bakes, how she makes food, uh, how she does dinner, parties, you know, the whole nine. Natalie Portman is there to, to, basically study her and take notes and whatnot. And so that causes friction and a rift with uh, the wife and the husband. And I guess, you know, I guess I could do a full review at some point next week, but it's produced by Will Ferrell's production company. And um, I think the, the husband, the, the uh, now he's going to be in his thirties, right? I think he is now 36. So he's now the age of that his now wife was when she uh, had the affair with him when he was 12. Does that make sense? So it's 24 years later and it was 92 when there was the affair, 91, 92, 93, 24, carry the one, 2016, 2015. Yeah. So he's now 36 and uh, he, he definitely has kind of the same relationship with her that you would expect from a 36 year old and a 12 year old like he still kind of acts like a kid at 12 year old so i think he's up <clears throat> they're pushing hard for him to to i don't know if it's to get an oscar but yeah i guess you know it's award season and so they're pushing hard for him to get an award and i would have to say i didn't it didn't initially hit me when i watched it like that guy deserves an award but in thinking about it more, he did give a pretty solid performance. So, yeah, I'm, I'm cool with it. <laughs> I think the the thing that's so there the thing that stood out to me uh, was that the music was purposely had to be very melodramatic, as if it were 
a TV movie or a soap opera, like a che- cheesy TV movie. Like anytime there's a big moment, dramatic moment, a twist, a curveball, a transition, segue, it always was that kind of jaunting melodramatic music that it was like, well, this feels out of place. This is an, this is a, this is a, <laughs> this is a, a film, sir. This is a film, a dramatic film. So I think that was intentional because it, it, I guess to maybe in certain respects to lighten the mood, but also draw to draw attention to how ridiculous the whole situation is. Like the fact that there was already a TV movie made and Natalie Portman watched it and they show scenes from it and you're like, oh my God, that's so cheesy. And then at the end of the movie, you know, I don't want to spoil it, but, you know, maybe I will do a full review. Maybe I won't. I don't know. Dude, tune in next week to find out. So went to bed. She woke up early to do a, a ride, like a full 45 minute workout, which is I'm telling you, so that's not, <laughs> I don't know how she does it. Um, but we, uh, we ordered brunch delivery. Uh, from a nearby diner, I got the breakfast burrito, which was was the Zabom. She had a truffle hot sauce. Oh my god! I don't have the name of the truffle hot sauce. I forgot to get it because I feel like you gotta you gotta know about it and you gotta go out and get it. Even though I'm supposed to steer clear of spicy foods, oily foods, caffeine and alcohol, I pretty much did all that shit this weekend. <laughs> you know, I did the ramen. I had ramen for the first time. You know, uh, non cup of noodles ramen. So like, I, you know, I, I lived almost exclusively on a cup of noodles in college because it was like 99 cents a container in that styrofoam, that really shitty styrofoam that probably wasn't great for you. But other than that, I haven't had ramen, like real ramen that you don't have to put in a microwave. So that ramen uh, changed my life. And there's a ramen place in Princeton that I never thought to check because I was like, I don't know if I'm into ramen. I'm into ramen. I got the one I had like a ch- had chorizo, noodles, uh, egg, uh, bamboo shoots. I mean, it was it was so good and very spicy, but didn't really uh, negatively affect me at all. So I mean, it, I I have to be over the cough now. If I threw all that shit at it this past weekend, did all the things I shouldn't do, and I, and I came out of it in the clear. I think we're we're good to go. So uh, while we while we had brunch, we watched the Food Network. I have not watched the Food Network in twenty years. I in, when I was in grad school in Baltimore, and uh, I would come home in the afternoon, and I think I would either work out, come home, and lay on the lay on the floor and watch the Food Network and fall asleep before I had to go to work as a, as a waiter, or before I had to go to class in friggin' DC. Yeah, wrap your head around that. Or it would be, yeah, it would be, it's always that two to three out, 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. type window where I would tune in. So it was always afternoons, early afternoons and watch, uh, and watch Food Network. And it was, you know, ugh. Never cooked any of the shit that I saw, but it was just, it was just, it's so satisfying, fulfilling and cozy entertainment. And uh, it shit, shit hasn't changed. Watched the Food Network. Watched like two or three programs back to back, and it was like each one was more enjoyable than the last. <laughs> it was just like, and they they like to they, and they throw some curveballs in there. I guess the first <clears throat> chef we saw was a lady in her home, long red hair, bit on the heavier side, and uh, making unbelievable amounts of food for her family. Uh, it was all centered around holiday, you know, holiday cooking, holiday food recipes. The one dish she made was like a strawberry pie type thing that looked like a mountain. Like I think I saw the Grinch on the top of that uh, peak. Uh, that's not a pie. Like it was like pretzel, crushed pretzel crust which I don't even know how that stays together. I know she was explaining it with like, there's some kind of molasses or syrup you pour on it and let it harden. And then she scooped up a bunch of strawberries and put it in. And I was like, you know, that this is actually looking pretty good. I think I might want to try this. 
And she just kept putting more and more strawberries on to the point where it's like literally a molehill. How the fuck are you going to slice and serve that? So I think if you can't slice and serve it, is it a pie? Or is it just a pile of strawberries? And then after that, we watched, uh, it's a, <clears throat> a, a Jewish Chinese woman who was raised, born in Norway. Like she's of Chinese descent, Jewish uh, heritage, but was born and raised in Norway and then moved to the farm, a farm in North Dakota. <laughs> it's just like, holy shit, do you check every single possible box? Um, and she is, she is an absolute delight. This is not like a, an affirmative action type thing where it's like, well, we need more diversity. So throw her on. She is legitimately very funny and entertaining. And, uh, I, I could watch her all day, like just so bubbly, but not like fake bubbly or insincere or inauthentic, like, uh, just like cracking jokes and like little nerdy jokes and just like funny light um and just made it seem fun you know calling like dumplings happy and saying this potato is is silly like uh, just like thing attributing attributes attributing traits and characteristics to inanimate food <laughs> which i thought was great um so yeah i i i wouldn't mind doing that you know if we can't if uh if i'm not got my hand on the the controller you feel free to put that on we she has Sunday ticket because she is a uh, fan of an out of market team. Again, hesitant to give too many details on this, but she uh, yeah. So she got the Sunday ticket, which is now through YouTube TV. Um, her team was playing at four, which I guess gives might give it away. Mm -hmm. And then we watched a, a, a we had the multi view up, which is the split screen with the four screens. You can do four, three, two screens, which I, was, uh, I think I mentioned it before with March, when March Madness was happening, YouTube TV rolled it out and it's fucking awesome. It's so great. We put on Rams, Ravens, Colts, Bengals, Jags, Browns, Lions, Bears. All those games were good. Colts, Bengals got a little out of hand towards the end, but Rams, Ravens went into overtime, walk off, punt return for a touchdown. Uh, Jags, Browns, Joe Flacco. Comes off the couch, Justin Pugh style, leads the Browns to a big win over the Jags, which apparently Trevor Lawrence is back. What the fuck happened there? He went down on that Monday night. Was it Monday night? He gets tackled and like uh, against the Bengals. And like, what's his name? Hendricks, Hendrickson from the Bengals, the end, like immediately goes down to a knee and starts praying. And you're like, like they didn't take him off on a cart, which he, you know, everyone was roasting the Jags personnel medical personnel and training staff for not getting this guy a cart and we're like okay so now this alters the playoff picture we thought the jags had an opportunity to get the number one seed with trevor lawrence at the helm now that he's down for the rest of the he's definitely out for the rest of the season um and cj bethard is not like i think he actually might have led them to a touchdown or a field goal towards the end of that game but everyone's like no nah, no way jags are cooked and Lawrence is playing, starting very next game against Cleveland. Was he his usual self? No. You could tell that he wasn't exactly moving uh, at 100%, but it also didn't look like he was favoring it too much. So um, I thought the Browns were, uh, you know, my buddy's a Browns fan, and I, and I didn't have the heart to tell him, but I was like, after Deshaun Watson was lost for the season, I was like, nah, there's no way they're pulling this off. And, of course, they go out and they get – shellacked by i think the rams and you're like nope rounds are done and you come out and they beat the jags it's a wacky season case in point lions bears you know bears come out they are kind of on a bit of a hot streak right now lions are struggling they are on the struggle bus express lane hov style uh towards a pretty serious downfall a collapse, if you will. It was looking like they had the the potential to, uh, when the Niners were struggling and the, the Eagles didn't look like they were uh, 
the same team from last season, even though they're still winning games. It looked like the Lions at one point were going to take the one seed, and now they just uh, kind of a free fall. They're nine and four now, I think. So Bears come out with the big win. So those, all four of those games are really fun to watch, but it is interesting watching with another person, and you, I'm just not used to it. <laughs> I've been alone so long. Um, so I would something would happen in one of the four games, and I go ooh. And so then, the other, but I don't say anything after. And so the other person has to look at the all four games and be like, "What? What? What do you? Ew, what? What? What happened?" And so you then have to explain, like, "Oh, the, you know, this happened." Blah, blah, blah. But uh, my God, that was pure football heaven. Um, and then we we watched uh, the her team at four o'clock, looking like pretty strong in the hunt. It probably gives it away too, but. <laughs> I had to leave at halftime. Um, her daughter was coming back from being with her father, uh, from her ex, you know what I mean? And so I left at halftime, ended up forgetting my coat. Luckily I have a backup, although I think, um, my cats are not, they're my, not my, they're my ex cats. They're my ex's cats. One actually perished RIP fatty. Um, but I think when we were together, they might've peed on that coat. Hmm. And that's why I, I didn't wear it anymore. So I definitely smelled something today during my commute. So we need to look into that. Came home and I watched uh, Eagles Cowboys. Watched the Cowboys um, run roughshod all over the, the Philly squad. Uh, and it looks like, you know, the Philly's in a bit of a tumble now. So, and of course, people are saying that the Cowboys are now uh, Dax an MVP candidate and they're like serious Super Bowl contenders. And it's like, all right. I mean, I, it's hard to argue with, you know, the kind of, um, demolition they've put on a lot of teams. I mean, they've had how many wins of 20 plus points? They have 10 wins. They've beaten the, the, the piss out of the giants twice. They beat the crap out of the, uh, the commanders both times. That's four. Uh, this one against the Eagles is five. So I think they have six or more, maybe eight. The majority of their wins have been by 20 plus points. You know, I think people, uh, maybe got the wrong idea when they lost to the Cardinals. You know, I think that threw some people for a loop. And so they, they were downplaying them, but like they're, they're freaking hot right now. I mean, they got smoked by the Niners. You know, the Niners are the number one team. And I don't see that changing, barring, I mean, it's injury, really. That's the only thing that can to, to, can derail them. You know, if per, like Niners destroyed the, the Eagles the week before. So the Eagles are reeling. They're going to make the playoffs. It's just a question if, they, if they're going to be the two or the five seed. I don't think they're going to get back to the one seed status. Although they play the Giants to us, twice. They play us twice. So it's like... Ooh, yeah, maybe they could get the number one. And that's the show. That's the episode. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll we'll talk to you next week. What, there's going to be a lot of activity next week because the following week, there's no activity, no episodes. And I wish I had the kind of time or a producer or an editor to put together the best of 2023 because I think there were some great moments over this past year. Um, it's ending on a high note. I don't want to jinx anything, but it's ending on a high note. And 2024 is looking looking good. Up and up. So thank you. And we'll talk to you next time. Adios. Moo-cha-chos.